Hi, everybody. How are you? So happy to have you here today. Thank you for being here. Um, who's ready to have some fun with flowers? All right. Yeah, it's a, you know, it's a kind of Thursday evening kind of thing, right? So if you haven't already been to the bar, uh, <laughs> don't, you know, and you can do that anytime. Um, all right, let me get my notes in order here. Yes. Uh, welcome to Fun with Flowers Organic Ambiance. Did you know that Fun with Flowers is an educational outreach program that was founded by the Garden Club of Jacksonville more than 30 years ago? Yeah, we originated it. Our own Jan Sillick, who is on our board of trustees, started Fun with Flowers. Um, so we're really excited to have um, this program continue to be a model for other programs just like this throughout the country. Um, you're gonna learn the latest professional techniques, then create your own breathtaking floral creation during the hands-on portion of this program that you'll get to take home and put in your home or give as a gift. I'm Denise Reagan, and I am the Executive Director of the Garden Club of Jacksonville. I'm so happy to have you here with me tonight. With us on our staff is DeWitt Cooper and Daniel Donaldson, two of our event ambassadors. Um, yeah, give them a hand, I think so. They're attending bar tonight. Um, I wanted to thank all the Garden Club members who have joined us today. Are you a member of the Garden Club? Raise your hand. Yay, give yourselves a hand for being a member. We love our members and we, um, we hope that we show you our appreciation every day. But um, if you're not a member of the Garden Club of Jacksonville, it's not that we don't love you too, because we do. And really we would love you even more if you wanted to be a member of the Garden Club. Um, so if you want to be a member, if you want to find out more about membership, you can ask me, ask our staff, you can ask anyone who raised their hand. You can uh, pick up a brochure at the back of the um, room. You can go to our website and look it up. Um, there's lots of great reasons to be a member, one of which is you get discounts on programs just like this. All right, so membership, it's good. Um, and uh, let's see, on the Board of Trustees I have joining us tonight is the chair of Fun With Flowers, uh, <laughs> Joanne Crestel. She was checking you in tonight, so let's give her a hand. Thank you, Joanne. And I wanna tell you about a couple of programs that are coming up. We have one that I thought was particularly good for a Fun With Flowers program. Our next horticulture corner program is called Creating Wildflower Habitats. Um, Emily Bell of the Florida Wildflower Foundation is going to help you learn how to create habitat for native pollinators, birds, or other wildlife in your own landscape using native plants. Find out how you can support local biodiversity um, reduce the need for fertilizers, pesticides, herbicides, and conserve water resources all, all while providing food for local wildlife. So that's September 12th, um, so just a couple of weeks from now. Horticulture Corner, creating wildflower habitats. On September 16th, we have Budding Gardeners. It's a special Budding Gardeners, and this is our program for young children, grades one through six, but this is really for anyone. It is National Cleanup Day on September 16th. Did you know that? Um, we're gonna um, work with Riverside Avondale Preservation and there's gonna be teams throughout Riverside who are gonna be cleaning up. And actually this is gonna be all over the city and all over the country where people are out cleaning up that day. Um, you know, I think if more people um, you know, put a little work into you know, keeping their areas outside clean, it keeps other people, it gives them the idea that they can keep things clean as well. Um, maybe they put that in the, a trash can instead of throwing it on the ground. So join us for this program. We would love to have you here. We're gonna have all the supplies you need to help us clean up. And then there'll be a nice little snack, a little treat afterward. Sickles, popsicles, anyone? All right. <laughs> um, on September 28th, we have our open house. This is a big thing for us. Every year we do a big open house where we welcome the whole community in to come and learn about the Garden Club of Jacksonville. You'll enjoy small bites, music by Pierre Kendrick, a saxophonist, um, and uh, drinks. And then you're going to be with a community of people who love the environment. Um, you're going to learn about all the exciting programs we have ahead and, and why you should be a part of it and how you can volunteer and take part. And then the last program I want to tell you about is our Community Garden Summit. This is an expanded program we're doing. We're so excited about this. We have um, all the community gardens in Northeast Florida, we are inviting them to come and be a part of this program. They'll all have tables here, so you can visit all of them. They're gonna be a, um, a panel where they're gonna talk about best practices. So if you're trying to build, maintain, sustain a community garden, how do you do that? What does it take? 
Um, there'll be a seed swap. There's going to be all sorts of cool stuff going on. So that's October 24th. So put that on your calendar because that's going to be really cool. All right. So I hope we've given you some reasons to come back. Now I'd like to introduce the star of our show, um, our speaker for today. Megan Rubin has called Jacksonville her home since 2010. Following the planning of her own wedding, Megan realized a career in the wedding industry was her calling. As she began her floral design journey in 2015, she seamlessly integrated into the marble and pine team as a freelancer and swiftly ascended to design lead. In late 2021, Megan assumed ownership of marble and pine and the company has flourished ever since. Marble and Pine serves the entirety of Northeast Florida, as well as portions of South Florida and coastal Georgia. Megan's team specializes in large weddings and events, including rehearsal dinners and nonprofit functions. The overall vision of Marble and Pine is to cultivate an upscale organic ambiance that resonates with their clients. As a company, they strive to create designs that reflect the beauty and organic growth found in nature. Hence the name, Organic Ambiance, of our program today. If you have questions, feel free to raise your hand, shout them out. Megan will try to um, repeat them because we are recording today's program. We want to capture those as part of the program. But it's going to be a little, you know, kind of it's an evening program. So it's a little more, uh, you know, fun and not um, so structured. Um, and... Uh, we also have a survey that we want you to take. I don't have any of them up here, but there's a little QR code. Please take our survey. If you can, scan it with your phone tonight before you leave. That way you'll get it out of the way. We will send you one tomorrow or the day after, but please take our survey. We want your feedback. We want to know how we're doing. All right, without further ado, please welcome Megan Rubin. Hello. Sorry, <laughs> let me clear my throat first. Okay. Um, so this is only the second time I've done this. This morning was the first time, <laughs> so bear with me. Obviously I do this every day, but I don't teach it to a crowd of people every day. So this is definitely new for me. Um, so what I am going to do today is talk about how we design as a company. Like Denise said, we do try and keep our style organic and flowing anything with texture, um, movement, things of that nature is typically what we like to work with, what I like to work with. Um, I dictate what everybody else works with. <laughs> um, so what I'm going to do is I am going to start with this arrangement. You guys all have the same bowl at your stations once we move into the hands-on portion of everything. Um, so starting out, there's actually a number of ways that we can base your bowl or structure your bowl to start your arrangement. Um, the way that everybody does have at the station and that I'm going to work with up here is with foam. Has anyone taken a class like this before or is, okay, perfect. So familiar with kind of the basics of starting an arrangement. There are a couple of other ways, um, a little bit more environmentally friendly and things of that nature too that you can work with. We also use a lot of chicken wire in our arrangements. Um, that's typically when we're working with bases and things of that nature, we do use chicken wire um, because it's reusable. We don't throw it away um, and all of that stuff because we do so many events that it is it can be extremely wasteful on our part. Um, so we try and do our part little by little when we can. Um, so chicken wire is another good option. Um, and then the third option are pin frogs. If you're familiar with pin frogs, um, those typically get glued down to the bottom of your vase and you can stick the flowers on them. They come in all shapes and sizes. Um, and then sometimes too, because we do large events, um, there's a lot of moving things multiple times. Like our hands will touch stuff at least four or five times in the course of a week leading up to a wedding. So we'll even use the combination of pin frogs and chicken wire just to make sure that our structure is sound. Um, so if you're doing anything like that, it's usually good to mix those two or foam is always a good option. Um, not everything lives well in foam is the only other thing that you might wanna consider if you are gonna do a lot of floral arranging, but everything that we have today does, so that's good. So I'm going to start by filling 
up my bowl. Everybody has a cylinder vase with your flowers in it and there's water in that. So you can use that to fill up your bowl once we get there. So I am going to start with my greenery. So this kind of, so really what I'm going to do is right now what's trending as far as wedding goes is a very floral heavy, flower heavy arrangement. So you don't see a ton of greenery right now. And if you do, it's very whimsical and very little, at least as far as what we look at and what we work with. Um, so essentially I want to start by covering the mechanics of my arrangement. So I want to hide all this ugly tape. Um, you can use clear tape. There's clear tape. It doesn't work as good as this green floral tape, but it does exist and we do use it. Um, it's a lot easier to hide, especially on white bowls. Um, and if you have any questions, please feel free to ask them. So my goal with this is I'm not going to get too wild with my greens. I am essentially just going to use it strictly to cover everything. You can get kind of wild. Um, I have a little extra green if you want to get a little wild. Um, but I am going to keep things kind of tight here. I might go a little crazy. We'll see. I say it and then I change my mind. Does anyone who does floral design on a regular basis have things that you really like to work with? Anyone just shout them out? No? Well, I'm hopefully going to show you some fun things today that I really like working with. Okay, so I have kind of the gist of where I want to start, the direction of where I want to go. Um, typically, if we're doing something more organic, we have something that we refer to as negative space. You don't have to have negative space and it can come in different shapes and sizes, but typically I like my negative space to kind of be right here. So that's what I'm going to try and keep as I go through adding everything in. So the first thing I'm going to add, because this is going to help me cover my mechanics that currently exist, are going to be hydrangeas. So these hydrangeas aren't going to be a focal point of my centerpiece. They're strictly going to be here just to hide my mechanics like you would if you were doing greenery. The good thing about it is when you're looking at the arrangement later, once it's complete, you see flowers and not greenery. So that's kind of the trick there. Don't be afraid to cut them apart. Um, I am a big fan of cutting things, um, but do keep in mind that you can go shorter, not longer. So, and then I'm going to try and design towards you guys as best I can, um, but I will turn from time to time just to kind of see what I'm doing. And I think you guys can see my hands either way I look, either way it goes, I'm pretty sure. I'll say one of my favorite things about doing something like this is everybody's going to have pretty much the same recipe to work with this evening, but nobody's arrangement will be the same. And that is by far my favorite part of doing all of this. Okay, so I have, well, I guess I started this way. Um, so now I have my flower base also don't be afraid to hold on to scraps like these leaves. I might even go back in later if I see holes or if I see anywhere else where I want something big to draw an eye, I might actually go back and put those in. Don't be afraid to hold on to those. Um, so the next thing when I go through an arrangement that I usually like to start with are anything that has this cone shape to it. So in the arrangement, I'm actually going to start with some really pretty blue delphinium. So I have blue delphinium. You guys will have white delphinium that is massive at your stations. 
don't be afraid to cut it down. If I could show you an example of cutting some down, um, I would, but these blue are not as pretty as the white. Well, I shouldn't say they're pretty. They're pretty, but they're not as large as the white. Um, so I'm going to make sure that I'm also doing things at different heights. So, so essentially what you want to do when you're arranging flowers is making sure that not everything, or at least in an organic atmosphere, you want to make sure that not everything is on the same plane. We want to stack things, layer things so that it gives some visual interest. You have things at different heights. Your eye is drawn a lot of different directions. So that is what I'm going to start doing now. Like even and I started my hydrangeas and that's why I've got some greens up high, some greens down low. Being asymmetrical is also a really big thing. I'm not going to do asymmetrical because I'm not raised and this isn't for like an art kind of object. So once I have in my delphinium, which I personally like to use as kind of a base as well. A lot of the things that I use on a regular basis is going to have a lot of ruffle, going to have a lot of fluff. Um, I find it really interesting. I find it very pretty. Um, I think the more ruffles, the better, in my personal opinion. So I'm going to continue with stock. So I've got some white stock, I've got some yellow stock, and I have some pink stock up here. Um, you guys all have yellow stock at your stations. There is some white and pink over here. If you want to incorporate that, you guys will be able to grab that once you move on to the hands-on portion of things. I'm not even going to be afraid to go down kind of low with this. Another thing that you can think about when you're going through and you're doing an organic feeling to what you're doing is making sure that your flowers aren't necessarily going all the same direction. So it's a lot of fun if you have some guys who like to look at each other, maybe up close, maybe from afar, however you want those guys to look. Another thing that helps with an organic feel is envisioning what everything would look like if it were in a garden. Um, so things are typically going to be clustered because, you know, they grow together, they reseed in certain places, but you do occasionally have, you know, flowers that don't go anywhere and keep coming back every year or reseed all over the place. Um, so they just kind of end up in the mix of everything. So that's one thing to think about. This is where I am at at this point. I think I'm going to move on from stock. I might go back later and add some stuff. You can always do that. Everybody typically will ask if there's a rule of thumb on how you arrange. And there is. There's kind of like a, a, a really light, I guess, I don't even know the word that I want to use, but a light way that you would go about doing it, whether what you do first, second, third, fourth, fifth, however you do that. So we do always want to do our greens or our base first, and then you would do your filler flowers typically, and then you would do your primary flowers, secondary flowers, and then depending upon how versed your recipe is, you could go into a multitude of other different kind of flyers and things of that nature. I have a little bit of everything that you guys will be working with today and that I'll be putting in here. Um, I am going to do it out of order and I'm actually going to put my filler flower in last because it's probably one of my favorite flowers that's up here. Um, so next I am going to add in a little bit more texture, a little less ruffled, more of this bell shape. This is Campanula. It is one of my favorites. Personally, I love working with this. So again, I'm going to go in, I'm going to continue the direction of my arrangement. I might even get a little crazy. 
and make him go pretty high in the center because I like for him to stand out. And then typically when we are designing, we do follow a slight code, not code, it's probably too strong of a word, but um, of the number of flowers that we put in per variety. So we typically work with odd numbers, anywhere three, five, seven, depending again how large your arrangement is. So a lot of what we'll see today is going to be more in like the three to five range. We do have some twos. Like I only use two hydrangeas. Um, I'll probably only use a couple of roses. I have some up here. Um, but that's that's another kind of loose rule of thumb. Doesn't mean that we follow it very strictly, but it is it is a nice one just to always have in the back of your head when you're doing stuff. So this is where I'm at. I've got a lot of texture. I've got a lot of ruffles, which is what I really enjoy. Um, this is all very visually pleasing for me. And that's essentially what you're doing is making stuff that's visually pleasing for you. Um, granted, we do have clients and people that we want it to be visually pleasing for, but that is your ideal client, right? Someone who enjoys what you enjoy. So right now I am putting in some apricot snapdragons. And then I'm gonna go in to the front and add some pink so that we can see them up front too. Snapdragons are another, I know I have a lot, but another one of my favorites because they do have a lot of movement. They've got a lot of this drooping, which I enjoy because it brings the eye different places. You also don't want to be afraid to let your flowers come out at you. Typically, when you're designing, it's always easy just to go up and up and up. But we want to make sure that stuff's coming at you, too. I think that makes it kind of fun. All right. So I have my snapdragons in. And now I might, I might pivot. I'm gonna see how I like this rose in here. <clears throat> Excuse me. So roses are a lot of fun. I love this color. I actually just saw this one for the first time today. It is new to my wholesaler, um, but I love it already. We do have some other ones that are similar in color that I had gotten specifically for this that are under there, um, but I wanted to use this guy since I've never used them before. So opening roses, it's pretty easy. Um, if you've never worked with roses before, or if you just have never thought that you could open them any bigger, there's a couple of ways to do it. I'm just spinning it in my hands like this. It'll open them a little bit. You can blow on them. I'm not going to blow because it was very loud earlier, but you can blow on it and spin it. <laughs> um, so those are a couple of ways. And then, of course, if you still want some more size, get in there with your fingers. Don't be afraid. Um, they're very ruffly. Again, I'm a sucker for ruffles. So. And so like a rose or something like that would typically be a good primary flower if you're starting out. Um, they are good bases. They help to kind of ground your arrangement. Um, so they are good for that, um, but that doesn't mean that you can't go a little crazy with them. There are a lot of weddings nowadays where roses are definitely free flyers in a lot of arrangements. Not everybody loves it and that's okay, um, but you might and just know it's okay to do. So I've only put a couple in there. I kind of like that color against the blue, which is partly why I wanted to use it. Um, and then I think I'm gonna go in with a couple of carnations too. I might actually grab one more rose. Just to give my round out my backside over here. And then sometimes that happens. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> 
another kind of general rule of thumb when designing is to work in what they refer to as like a triangular pattern. And I sort of did it right here, which is why I'm going to point it out. Um, you guys can see me, right? So how these roses are kind of all three of them are in a, a loose triangular shape, but triangular more, more or less. Um, so I'm going to move on and I'm going to put a couple carnations in. Again, I'm going to make my carnations kind of a primary flower. These are very tight. Um, so we can open them up pretty easily by just pulling back all of these green growths and then just kind of get in there and loosen them up. Um, they're very hardy, very sturdy, so don't really be afraid to pull them back and use a little bit of force. It's also pretty popular and trendy right now um, to pull out the center of carnations. Um, I don't understand it. I don't see it, but um, but it is popular. Some people do like it. There is like a little head in there that's cute when you look at it from here, but I feel like when you start to pull stuff out, you pull that out too. So I don't know if any of you guys have seen that before. I've got a really good base, so now I'm having a hard time. I'm do it all over again. So this carnation is a, a leggy maroon, is his name. He's he's a cute guy. It's a little on the small side this go around, but the color is very pretty. It's that dusty rose, which is popular right now for events and, and things like that. Pop him because I feel like I need some color down here around the screens. And then I think my third guy, I'm gonna let maybe live a little bring him out some. I'm sorry about my fingernails. It's just the nature of the field. They're gross. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do garden, yeah. Yeah, it'll get you every time. All right, so I did let my guy live a little. Um, I don't typically let carnations fly, but kind of feeling them. Um, so the second to last thing that I'm actually gonna put in here is a ranunculus. Um, ranunculus are great, very ruffled, very popular. They come in a lot of different colors, which is also helpful. This apricot and probably white are the two that we use the most, um, but they are very pretty. I did not put wire up here for myself, so let me grab that. So depending upon the ranunculus you get, some of them can be pretty sturdy, some of them can be very flimsy. Um, typically because their heads can be so big, they start to topple over. And especially, like I mentioned before, we're touching these four or five times before we place them permanently. Um, so we will go through and we will wire them um, just to kind of give them that extra support. Please forgive me. I look like a crazy person when I wire these because I'm doing it all off of touch. I'm not looking at it. I feel like if you look at it, then it doesn't do what you want it to do. So I'm just kind of running my hands down the stem as I feel the wire go through. And that way, if I feel it start to poke out a little bit, I can pull it back and redo it before I break the entire stem. But if you do break the entire stem, it will still, like if you slit it open, it will still drink. Um, it's just a matter of supporting it. 
after that, which you can do with like pull apart tape and things like that. But we want to keep them as, as natural as possible. The other good thing about once you do wire them is you can kind of adjust the movement of where they go. So if I put them in here and I'm like, I li like, I like that he's there, but I kind of want him to go this direction a little bit. I can, I can make him do that. So I am going to come. I'm sorry. So I didn't go too far. Um, I am about right here. It's inside. Yeah. So there's the center, which is a cone shape. Sometimes it's got a little bit of a wider center and you can go straight through the center. Um, sometimes it's a little harder when they're more narrowed. So you can even just kind of go in on the side of that, but we want to make sure that we do get it inside the stem. You can also go through the base of the stem. Um, I find it easier to go through the top of the stem. So yeah, it's just, uh, I think this is 18 gauge wire. Um, I, I did have a lot of questions this morning about where I get stuff from. Um, so my main wholesaler is here in Jacksonville. It's DK um, wholesalers. So I do go through them for a lot. I actually work out of there now. Um, they just added some permanent um, design space and then also some temporary design space. If there's anyone who needs either or. Um, so I'm actually been moving in this week, which has been fun. Um, but yeah, they have everything that I have up here. You can get from them. Flowers included. We also have some really nice local farmers here in Jacksonville too. Um, of course, nobody's growing anything right now because it's hot. <laughs> but we do have some smaller farms here. And this guy's going to give me a little bit of trouble. I'm probably not going to go too far to meet this guy. These guys really aren't terrible as far as the delicateness of their head to stem ratio, I guess. So again, these are kind of my flyers. So I'm going to let them do their thing. Yeah. So I'm going to let him live his best life. And then again, kind of personal preference, buds. I typically, just for weddings and events, we cut them off um, because we use them for boutonnieres and things of that nature, corsages, things like that. It gives us a little extra product. Um, but because we're not worried about that today, I'm going to let these buds have have some fun. Actually, my camera needs to see how this guy looks. So this is where I am with a majority of what you guys have. You guys might have a little bit more at your stations than what I've put in here. Um, but I like this guy. I'm not mad at him. Could I have more ranunculus? Yes, because I don't think that there's a limit on those. Um, but I'll set them up for you guys. <laughs> so the last thing that I'm going to put in, like I mentioned earlier, is my filler flower. Um, this is chamomile. I love it, um, which is why I'm not using it for its actual purpose of filling the arrangement. I'm actually going to let him stand out and make his presence known. Um, so don't be afraid. There's many stems on this. Don't be afraid to cut these apart. I will probably cut them all apart. Um, let's see.
these guys, I'm a sucker for yellow flowers, hints, a lot of yellow in these. Um, so anything with a yellow center is always gonna make me happy. <laughs> And now I'm just gonna go through, fill in any kind of holes that I have left with this. Um, again, most of my mechanics are pretty much covered from my base. I did get a good, I did get a good base out of the project that I used. Um, so I don't really, that's not my fear at this point. Um, it's really just more for highlighting and fun. I have not, mm -mm. I've not heard of it. Um, I feel like the only fern that I use, so yes, what, if I use firecracker fern, yeah. Okay, okay. Okay, okay, I'll have to look into that. And I'm sure it probably grows well here, which is, yeah, which is always a plus. Since I stopped today, after I left here, I went home to eat lunch real quick, and one of my neighbors had someone lay, um, trimming one of her trees. So I stopped, and I was like, can I take this? I was like, yeah, she gave me her card, so now I got a new a new contact for for branches and things like that, which is fun. I always feel kind of strange walking up. Can I ask you an interesting question? Can I have this? <laughs> I thought about reaching out to like tree cutting companies and being like as a point of contact if I need stuff for large installs Um, because the oak is ideal. All right, so I think I'm gonna put this guy in and then I'm gonna call this guy because I like him. So this is, this is my guy. This is my guy that we created right here. Um, does anyone have any questions outside of, yeah? I don't know. I don't know. Lots of good friends. Sometimes they are she's and maybe it just depends on how they make me feel that day. <laughs> yeah, so um, I can bring the microphone out to you or just, um repeat the question oh yes just how um i came up with all my flowers being he's versus she's her flowers are she's and it just depends on the day i guess <laughs> we do have a lot of girls i feel like sometimes my ranunculus are a lot of girls any other questions Yeah, absolutely. Um, there's a good, there's a really good rose. Um, so she asked if I could open, do the spinning effect on red roses and stuff like that from the grocery store. Um, so yes, absolutely. There is a quicksand rose. It's kind of like a dusty pink. And those I find are by far, they respond the best to it. They are absolutely gorgeous. They'll go from being closed like that to like their heads could be this big once you open them like that. It's amazing. Um, so yes, absolutely. Anything else? I don't wire roses. So she asked if I, um, if you would wire roses. I don't wire roses. Um, a lot of the girls that I talk to that like in kind of this industry that come from like real floral shops and things of that nature, they typically do wire roses. Um, she said as a kid, there's one woman in particular I'm thinking of, her parents owned a flower shop and she said as a kid, that's all she did was wire roses. Um, but I do not. No, nope. I find them to be sturdy enough on their own that I don't need to. Any other questions? Oh. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, so could we wire Gerber daisies? Um, I think so. I don't work with Gerber daisies a whole lot. 
I have a handful of times, um, but I do work with a product that you essentially do the same thing, um, Scabiosa. Those also have a very large head and sometimes a thin stem. And they, when we get them from the farm, they have that same plastic sleeve on it. I typically keep them on, um, but that might just be, I, I, so I have wired Scabiosa, but sometimes with what I'm doing production wise, it's not always the best time wise. Um, I do like the clear though. You can barely see it, especially once we start sticking stuff in like this. Like if I had that up there, you wouldn't be able to see it. Um, but I don't know. That's a good question because somebody did ask me that this morning. So I probably should have looked that up. Um, but I don't know. I would try it. Yeah. You can also get larger gauge wire too. Um, this one's pretty thin because a majority of what we wire is just ranunculus. Um, sometimes tulips. Uh, parrot tulips also have a heavy head. Um, and so when we do those, we try and wire those the best we can. They're not ideal for wiring, um, but sometimes it's worth it. Um, and then, like I said, scabiosa and then delphinium. The delphinium, I actually also wire, especially when we're transporting um, because come in and out of vans, they're tall, the tops of them will break. So even if they've already broken, I can still go back in with a wire. I'll turn them upside down and stick like two pieces of wire in it and it'll straighten them back out. Um, so yeah. Do I cut roses underwater, under, under running water? I do not. No, I don't cut anything under running water. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Recutting your blooms and changing their water every other day, every couple of days is definitely a necessity. With this, if I, so our timeline for events, depending upon the, the size of our events, we'll start Monday or Tuesday off for a Saturday wedding. Um, so longevity is key. And I will go through, again, we have coolers that helps, um, but I will go through and I'll change our bucket. So if we process on Tuesday, I'll go in on Thursday and I'll change the water in all of our buckets because I want them to last as long as I can. Another good thing that we actually touched on this morning um, is kind of a finishing spray. Um, I use something called Hawaiian finishing spray. Um, we do do that on our arrangements. Again, longevity wise, it just helps to keep them looking good. A lot of flowers, not a lot, but some flowers also hydrate through their blooms as well as the stem. Um, so that's another good reason to use that finishing spray. What do I do to prep the flowers? So do you mean like as far as like my processing process or? So yes, there are flowers that um, kind of hold better in different ways. I typically process them all the same. We have a big old chopping block. We just kind of go through, we give them all a fresh cut. Um, take them out of any sort of wrapping that they come in. You'll see some of the ranunculus are still wrapped. I wanted to just support their heads before you guys got a hold of them because I didn't want everybody to have just droopy heads. Um, so you'll kind of see how those come before they're processed. Um, typically roses, if you get a pack of roses, we will cut them, put them in water for at least an hour and let them hydrate before we actually start taking off any of the wrapping because we want them to be hydrated and not, I mean, not dehydrated because then they're weak. Their necks can be weak and we don't want their heads falling off. So that's kind of our standard practice with roses. Um, there's a lot of other little niche things. Like if you're a big fan of poppies, burning the stems, hellebores, burning the stems. It sounds crazy, but it works. It holds the moisture inside the stem um, and then they can still collect through the sides. So, so yeah, so there's a lot of crazy things that you can do depending upon the flower. Yeah, good question. 
<laughs> okay, pardon me. Sorry, I'm a little choked there. I got choked up. Um, okay, so um, we're getting ready. <clears throat> we're getting ready for you to go and make your own. Um, Megan, I was like almost like, what is your well, name? Megan. Okay. Megan is going to um, make another um, uh, arrangement um, as well. Um, but then we're going to pass out some other. So you have uh, flowers at your stations, but we're going to pass out some other flowers to add to your things. And then you're going to have some other flowers that you can kind of you know, take from as you need. Um, can I have a big round of applause for Megan? Yeah. All right. So go forth and create. And then, like I mentioned, I didn't put the ranunculus in any of your containers because they are fragile or delicate. I won't say fragile, um, but I'm, I will come back. I will come around and pass them out. Okay. Oh.
Okay, so we are um, working on a third arrangement up here. So we're gonna have three arrangements and we're also going to do some STEM uh, groupings that uh, you can take home and, and use as well. So uh, we'll probably be doing the raffle in about 10 minutes.